this is going to be a review for factoring for what we'll get into next. So next is factoring quadratic equations. We're just going to go over a quick refresher of each type and then you'll finish this for homework. And we're just going to make sure that we're all on the same page with uh, factoring because you probably haven't done it since last year. So we're just going to go through it real quick. So the first set is dealing with the greatest common factor. Now, just remember that the greatest common factor, like say we look at number one, we're, we're deciding what number can we divide each of these numbers by? What's the greatest number that we can divide these numbers by and take out? Um, and in this case, we can divide both of those by six. That's the greatest common factor between the two. So once we do that, we'll be left with 2K minus 3. And that would be our answer. And then sometimes you have to um, do variables as well. And so let me zoom in just a little bit. Okay. So when we're looking at number two, first of all, what you're going to do is just look at the coefficients. What's the greatest common factor between those? It would be eight. I can divide both of those by eight. Um, and that's the greatest common factor. Now, you're going to look at your second variable or your first variable um, to complete the second part. So we've got x to the 8th and we've got x to the 4th. Now when you're doing exponents, you can only take out the, the least number um, that you have. So we've got x to the 8th, x to the 4th. We can only take out x to the 4th out of each of those. And then we lastly we look at our last coefficient or our last variable. In this case, it'd be y. And since both of them have y, we can take out a y. So what we'd be left with is we're taking that 8x to the fourth y and dividing it by each of these. So when we divide that, we'll be left with 40 divided by 8 is 5. X to the eighth divided by x to the fourth is x to the fourth. Because when we um, divide exponents, we're actually subtracting the exponents. Um, we won't be left with y, so y is completely taken out because y divided by y is just 1. Plus 64 divided by 8 is 8. x to the 4th divided by x to the 4th is just 1. And then y to the 4th divided by y to the 4th is just 1. So that's our final answer. So that's just some uh, greatest common factor review. You're going to do uh, 3 and 4. Um, now we're going to get to the second set. And this is a trinomial where x is equal or a is equal to 1. So when you're factoring, be sure to look for the greatest common factor of each of these. But when you're doing these, you use something called the product sum rule or as long as this number here um, is 1, we can take our last number, which is 45, and we need two numbers that will add to get or multiply together to give me 45 and then add together to give me 14, which would be 9 and 5. And the way that we would write that out is x plus 5, x or x plus 9, x plus 5. And now that's factored. And this should be reviewed for you. So you should, you should be able to um, catch back up on these or review these pretty quickly. All right, so on number six, like I said, when we're factoring these, when you have the setup of x squared or w squared minus something w plus something, that last number, you take that and we say, what two numbers can I multiply together to give me that and then add together to give me the middle? And in this case, we've got 26, so we could say um, 13 times 2. If we had both of those as minuses, we would um, we'd be good to go for negative 15. So our answer is going to be W minus 13 and W minus 2. So that'd be number 6. And like I said, this should be reviewed, so you're going to finish up um, 7, 8, 9, 10. Just be sure on 11 and 12. Look for your GCF because you'll be able to factor out something of those. All right, then the next group is a trinomial where A is greater than one, meaning we've got a number in front of this first, um, in front of our first term. 
So I'm not totally sure how you were taught to do this, but um, this is the easiest way to do these. So when you're given an example like this, where there is a number in front of that x uh, squared, or that first term, and you can't factor out a GCF, because here we can't divide 15 by 2, so we don't have a GCF here. You're going to take this a, or your first coefficient, and you're going to multiply it by the last. So you're going to be left with 2x minus 15x, and then here is going to go, it's going to change from 18 to 18 times 2, which that would be 36. So it would be plus 36. And now you're going to factor that out. But you have to remember one step. So once you factor this out, we would get, let's see, two numbers that multiply together to give me 36, and or subtract or add to give me 15. That'd be 12 and 3. And they both have to be negative. So x minus 3, x minus 12. So now we factor that out, but this is the rule that we're using is called bottoms up. And it tells us that when we multiplied first by this 2, by 18, after we factored it out, we have to come back and divide by that 2. So we're going to divide each of these terms or each of these numbers that we figured out was our, um, was our factors and divide those by 2. So that's going to give us x minus, let's see, 12 over 2 is 6. And then we've got x minus... 3 over 2. Now the reason this is called bottoms up is because you take the bottom of this fraction and bring it up in front and this is actually written as x minus 6 and then 2x minus 3. And hopefully you guys have seen that before. Um, if not, we may have to spend some more time on it. But just remember um, for bottoms up Let's see, or just, yeah, just remember from bottoms up, you start off by taking this first term, its coefficient, multiplying it by the last, and then you would rewrite this as p squared plus 22p minus, that would be 240. You find your factors between those, which these would be p plus 30 times p minus 8. You have to just make sure you come back and divide each of these by 5 or whatever you multiply by. And so then this would be P plus 6, 5P minus 8. Because when we have the fraction here, we just bring that number, the denominator of that number, and put it in front of our uh, variable. And then you're going to do the rest of these. Um, and then the last thing is um, difference of squares. So whenever you have difference of squares, you have two numbers that, or two terms that are subtracted. So you can never do difference of squares when there's an addition. Um, and, you, and you square both of those. They're pretty much like perfect squares. So you can square both of them, and then they break up into a specific... Um, they break up into a specific answer when they're factored out. So in this case, we've got x squared, which that can be squared evenly. It would just be x. And then we've got negative 4, which that would be 2. So the first time you rewrite this, you're going to say x minus 2. Then the second part of it is just x plus 2. So you end up saying x plus or minus um, or y plus or minus whatever. You have one, um, one of your answers. Um, with minus one of your answers with plus. And then we'll do number 22. So you can break up, we've got y squared and then we've got 81. The square root of y squared is just y. Square root of 81 is just 9. And the first time we rewrite it, we rewrite it as y minus 9. Second time, y plus 9. So those are pretty easy. Um, we may have to go over some of these just so you get a good refresher on them. But that's going to be our factoring review, and you're going to complete this entire thing, and we'll go over some examples of it as well.